going on with you guys? Thanks for tapping in with me again today. And if you're new to the channel, I'm Cleveland. So a little update on the 20 gallon over here. The shrimp has uh, has molted again. I did not take out the exoskeleton. The hermit crabs ate it as well as the shrimp. So I told you last time when I did a cleaning on this, I would need to also clean the filters. So that's why I want to do this updated video so you can see how I do it. It's still easy, it's still easy. It's a 20 gallon, so I'm still pulling off five gallons. I'm gonna put the five gallons inside of this inside of this garbage can right here, and then I'm gonna rinse the filter media inside the tank water. So let's get it going. And this algae right here. <laughs> Look at the algae growth because the light is sitting right on top of there. So I'm gonna take all that out, obviously. And um, and like I said last time, I like to use the rag to assist me with um, with wiping this down. I wish the snails could get up there because they would eat all that algae off. But they can't, so they're just eating the algae off the glass within the tank. But as you see, we still have quite the accumulated algae that's built up on the glass. So that's why I have to come in here and do this myself. Gotta be careful of the starfish down there. I hope you guys are having as good of luck as I am um, with the with this 20 gallon setup. I'm sure somebody decided to go ahead and get started on their first 20 gallon tank. And if that's you, go ahead and uh, drop a comment. Let me know how it's going. I'd love to hear about it. And if you have any additional questions, again, drop a comment. Go ahead and ask. I'll get to them. I do my best answering all questions that is left inside of the comment section. So don't hesitate to ask if you have a question. Almost done. So again, I'm going to leave the algae build up on the back glass. Not only does it make it look a little bit more natural, but again, it allows the snails to graze and um, that's what you want. You see the Nazareth snails sticking their little, uh, sticking out their little noses or their mouths, whatever those are. So whenever I feed, they start, they, they basically stick that up out the sand to get a sense of what's going on. So since I'm stirring around the sand and things like that, they don't know if it's feeding time or not. So they use that, like I said, to sense the food. But anyway, so we're going to do this quick, siphon out these five gallons. I'll get the sand a little bit. These, uh, the serious snails do a really good job with keeping the sand turned over. And if you notice, as I'm sucking it out, it's not really dirty at all. You know, you don't see much debris being sucked up out of there. That's because it's not really dirty. But this is a, this is just in case there's some uneaten food that the hermit crabs and the fish and the snails and all the inhabitants, if they're not getting to it or have it or have yet to get to it, you know, you go ahead and just take it out manually as you feed them, you'll always accumulate more. So it's good to get that up out of your tank. And in the back, it's a little more dirty than the front. So I am getting out some debris. But still, not bad at all. Where are we at with this? Uh, not even halfway. 
I see a little piece of the exoskeleton. I, you can't really see it. Maybe if you go at this angle right there, I see it right there. Zoom in, right where I'm pointing at. You see it? Well, oh, maybe you yeah. come over a little bit more. Oh, oh, you have to look off the glass, baby. There you go, right there. Oh, yeah. There you go. So you see a little piece of the exoskeleton right there. So this guy is in here happy and getting big. He's already molted twice. I got a, a better view. Good job, babe. Thank you. So he's already molted twice. So as you know, when they molt, that means they're growing. So he's doing good. He's happy. So as that's going, I will now start disconnecting these filters. There we go, that's one. turn it turn it counterclockwise and then the motor should come right on off This is all mechanical filtration. And this, that's about it. Right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour that water into this trash can. And uh, use, like I said, use that water to clean it out. So look at all that debris, all that detritus. So. Biomax right here, and then again, another sponge. So, we can break this down even more. Just come right on out. it down like that all these different parts can get washed with regular water you don't really have to worry about um trying to spare any of your beneficial bacteria on this i mean you can but these other components will hold enough the, the mag the biomax as well as the sponge so if you will uh i'm about to go and clean these off and i'll be right back to take care of those So 
since it's such a small tank, I won't even need to put a whole five gallons into there. All right, all I'm going to need to clean these sponges and this media. Just like that. And that is it. So we'll load back up this one first. And if there is some more room, I'm going to show you how to just maximize on your filtration. Because I did buy um, some more Biomax because I don't use the lava rock for the um, salt water. So if you think that's, that's something you could do, you really got to get that out of your mind because of the way the chemistry with the um, lava rock, the way it breaks down with the salt water, it's really not good. So you don't want to use the lava rock. But fresh water, use lava rock. So that's it. This is right here what I was talking about. So I will buy another media bag, put that in there, and add that to that to that filter right there, which will give us additional filtration. And so that's where your beneficial bacteria colonize. So back to this. We'll put these right back together. Put them on going clockwise. That's one. Here's the other one. Turn it clockwise. For use, don't never run them dry. The quickest way to burn out your motor. That's good to know. I guess a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Now that the starfish came out. moving all right hold on i've never really seen a move like that mm -hmm. he's getting big sorry it's okay all right so you want to make sure your water is the same temperature as the water that's in the tank before you put it in there put it in there so you don't shock your fish ah See quite a bit of stuff stirred up. So what I'll do is I got a couple options. I can either fish through there and pull it out. So I'm going to siphon out some of that.
So you could just as well use a net to fish it out. I tend to do that with a 150 gallon, but um, it's, it's quite a bit. One way of preventing that is to take like a little, uh, the same little, it looks like, a, looks like a baster to be quite honest. You use that to feed your corals and things like that. But um, I'll show you, matter of fact, I'll show it to you right now. So you can take this right here and what you do with it, you basically spray or squirt at the rocks and the crevices and you basically flush out all that. I'm oh, sorry, sorry starfish. You basically squirt out all of the detritus that might not already be on the sand. So, and this is what you use to feed like your corals and things like that. We decide to get corals, you'll certainly see how that works. But I don't want to do too much of a water change because I've already pulled out 50%. And I'm definitely not trying to do, you know, 70, 80, anything like that. So that's all I'm going to do. And then a little bit more. So look, this is what I mean when you just, just basically remove all the large organics because those things will get caught up in a net. to get it super clean you know I've done that plenty of times it's very rare that I'm a hundred percent satisfied with uh, with the water change and the cleaning that I've done because I feel like there's always something else that needs to be done but when you're pulling water out of the tank and and things like that you know that's a that's a problem if you're pulling out a whole bunch so you really got to be careful. All right. So, that will do it. Let me go ahead and plug back in these filters. You feel okay, huh? All right, got to jump start the other one. Oh, wow, again? Per usual, yeah. Here we go. All right, as you see, the water working its way, working its way out right now, so. 
Both filters are back going. All right, so we pull out this uh, little piece of exoskeleton right here. So it's going to be a little cloudy until uh, until it all clears up, everything settles and clear up. But that's pretty much it. That is a more of a, a deeper thorough cleaning. Um, I only have to clean those filters maybe uh, most really as often as they get dirty. Once it gets to the point to where it looks like they're accumulating too much detritus, you definitely want to go ahead and take care of that. And um, as you see, it's simple, it's really not hard at all. So don't neglect to take care of that and um, your fish will thank you. So. Let me go ahead and finish wiping this down and we can go ahead and, and finish up this video. Okay. All right, so that's it. I hope, uh, I hope I taught you something. I hope you learned exactly how you go about cleaning these hang on the back filters for your saltwater aquarium. We are about about a month in I believe with the saltwater tank and everybody's doing good so you know follow up video cleaning and uh you know just trying to make sure I give you guys some helpful tips. But anyway don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, follow me on Instagram at the fish corner, follow me on Facebook, my personal blog page at the fish corner. Follow my YouTube, my follow my Facebook group, Fishaholics, and um, don't forget to enter that contest. You know, we got a month. Matter of fact, we got 30 more days, and then um, I'll be announcing the winner of that 60-gallon aquarium. So take advantage of it. Thank you for tuning in again with me to, again today, and until next time, peace.